Okay, I want to do I want us to do something very interesting, right? In the process, we're going to expose number one, uh long twala, number two, we're going to expose Sande Kumalo, number three, we're going to expose uh Dumelo number four, we're going to expose uh um number 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 five, we're going to expose a uh, magistrate cronier uh, number six, we're going to expose Brigadier Kininda. And, and 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 the rest and the, and the list is endless of people that are going to be exposed now go back to the confession now i want you to look at the perception and the and the and the and, the, and, the, and, and look perception that are created uh during the, the look at the story how it's told right there's something that i want you to pick it up right so what i'm gonna do i'm gonna first tell you key points that danza said all right in his first confession to rapar uh, the second confession to uh, Magistrate Cronier, and then I'll go to Ndanzi, I mean, I'll go to Sbia, the confession he made to Umbot, uh, right? These three confessions, you will learn something. Number one, I, I'm going to show you something. Number one, Danzi spoke about, mm, look, uh, the fact, look, the, the, look, I've already spoken about other things, but in the confession that made by Ndanzi, Mapisa was uh when when look they they went into the incident right so when they got into the the the, the, the kumalo family right mapisa who is accused number four on the miwa case stood on the window right to make sure that nobody escaped through the window that's what you need to notice that is something that was said in the confession so he stood by the window then there is a getaway car that stands not far from the gate right there's something right there that you need to pay attention to. But before I ask you to pay attention to that, I am putting it to you that you do the following. If you are not yet subscribed, what are you waiting for? Come on, good people. Because to subscribe, it is free. To like the video, it is free. To comment in the comment section below, it is free of charge. To click the notification bell, it is free of charge. To share this video, it is free of charge. To watch this video until the end, it is free of charge. Also, good people, I mean, come on, to watch the ads, it's free of charge. And that's how you financially contribute to this YouTube channel. Speaking about financially contributing to the channel, you can join, become a member of this YouTube channel from as little as 20 rand a month. You can also uh, use the super thanks party. In case you don't want to do that, guys, there is a way where you can use my media company banking details. To donate to the channel and you know what i'm saying we'll bring you more and also guys want to buy more equipment so the power is in your hands please do the honorable thing as we proceed okay so as you do that now go back to the confession in the first confession danzi made is it's the rapado omboto the, the look one thing that he also highlight please don't mind me looking down is that uh the person that went into the house please don't mind me looking down it's because i've got those the notes here the person that went into the house it was ndanzi and Kalros. now they went into the house and that's how they look at that they look those are the people that went into the house to to take the way look at the the, the life of sons of me right but in the story that is being told by Ndanzi, by Ndanzi, the confession that is being told by Ndanzi, right? You must notice in the first, uh, in the first uh, confession, you will notice that uh, Kalros Gadlam Nube, who is accused number three in the Mayor case, he is more like a protagonist. A protagonist is a lead character uh, in the language, the South African like language. We will call you a, a, a staring in the move because he's leading almost everything. He's initiating the move. That's number number. Now, then in that in that confession, we learn that uh, we 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 learn in that confession that how Senzo Meiwa was shot. Pay attention to that. We learn in the confession to say Senzo Meiwa's mistake was that he jumped to Mnub and that is how he got shot, right? So if 
he did not jump in according to the first confession. Sansa Mayua wouldn't have got wouldn't have gotten shot. So are you seeing that picture? The confession made by Danzi tells us that story. Mube is the one that shot Senzo Meiwa. And the reason for that is that Senzo Meiwa jumped. You understand? When Mube got into that house and said, Futsa, cell phone and money. And, you know, you know what I'm saying? I want you to listen to this as well. I was briefed that the person to be eliminated or killed was Senzo Meiwa. And the matter is initiated by Kelly Kumar, who was going to make a payment for the whole job. We were positioned accordingly that Nkani will be the driver, Moses Sevilla will be the guard, and myself and Carlos will get inside Kelly's house. Mapisa will be outside as a backup and surveillance was was conducted. Sunday at about between 1900 and 2000 hours, we then proceeded to the address. I went in with Carlos and others took their positions as discussed during the planning. When we entered the house, Carlos shouted in Zulu, Pans, Imali, ne my cell phone. I started collecting cell phones and cash that was in the container. While I was still busy, Senzo jumped to Carlos and the struggle ensued where one shot went off and the second shot hit Senzo as the firearm was pointed at his chest. All right. Now, now we are going back, we are going to the second confession made by the very same Danzi. There's something interesting that I want you to pick it up here. Please notice, please note that in the first confession, they these people were aware that there might be people running away right if i find a picture i need to show you the the, the kumalo house so it is surprising that the confession doesn't make mention of tumelo or the sorry Mtogo, who ran into the nasha family this confession doesn't make notice doesn't make note of that secondly the confession doesn't note longwe twala running away the confession doesn't know that doesn't make note doesn't make mention of that. Now let's go into the second confession, by made by Danzi to Magistrate Cronier. Uh, number number one, the point that you need to notice is that, and Danzi said to be drinking and enjoying himself when he got there. Danzi said he doesn't drink; he only drink traditional when, when there is tradi look when there is something traditional, you know. You know those traditional things that we do as Africans. Not all of us, but I'm saying it in a language of African. That Africans have got traditional things that they do, whether cleansing or whatever. Danzi only drink in that occasion. So to say he was drinking, it's a lie. But then Danzi has put that on record. Number two, in like the second confession says, they were, look, they were they were in a poll, right? They were on their way to, uh, they were on their way to take the life of Senzo Meiwa. So what happened is that uh, on the on the polo, there's a reason why I need to mention. I need you to, to understand this. On that polo, it was Muzi, Danzi, Kalros. Um, it was Muzi, Danzi, Kalros, Mapisa, and Duni. Those are the people that went to take the life of Senzo Meiwa. Now, you will notice in Sibia's confession, that is different story. The people, according to Sibia, the people who took Senzo Mezua's life were Marco and uh, Ma, no, in, Ma, Ma, Ma Queen, something like that. So, that's why I said you need to pay attention to this. So, these five were in the car 
on their way to take the way of the life of San Zomeyi. Wow. At the stop sign, they introduce another Polo Vivo. And the person who is introduced at the stop sign or is introduced into this fiction is a guy called Simpiwe who gave them two guns. He, was, he also arrived in a Polo. But this Simpiwe guy, he only supplied them with the firearms, but he did not proceed with them to, the, to the crime scene. Uh, so they went. They then left that stop sign. They went into the house to take the the, the life of Senzo Meiwa, right? To the Kelly Kumala house. Uh, so the, the the second confession of Danzi again, it portrayed Nube as a captain of the ship. Because it is Nube that when they got there, Nube then tells them what to do. He says to them, take position. You know. Yeah, as, as they got there, it says to you, everybody's instructed, take position so that you can do what, you know what I'm saying? So then they, they reply, they comply to the, those conditions. Now, Sfiso and Dule, accused number five, was going to be the driver. There, there is a reason I'm mentioning this. Makubu is going to deal with this to show that, hey, that guy was already arrested. Mozi was standing outside as a person that was observing things they look was on the was making sure that he's observing things on the yard right uh, and then mapisa stood by the window this is this is that's the second confession gives us these details however two people that are standing are on the lookout they don't pick up when jumped into the Nasha family. This confession doesn't make mention of that. Number two, Long Wetwala said he ran. Right? When these people get got into the house, he ran out. This confession doesn't make mention of that. Why? U Minister of Police, Ebi let Kopenga Selanga Kyuala. Ubona kuti lento bupkoki. Kunzi mu explain upkoki kalogu. People have lost their careers because of that thing. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So that's where you see that there's something faulty about the story. The story is man-made. The story doesn't make sense. Right? Because it can't be that Mapisa is standing by the window observing whosoever's going get, to get out of, the, of that house. But then... Uh, Moose is standing there, but nobody make mention of these two people. One, Tozi who jumped into the Nasha family. Two, Longa who ran out of the house. No, Ndanzi should have made mention of that in this confession, that there was a person that ran out of the house. He doesn't make mention of that. Mapisa should have, look, uh, Mapisa should have seen one of these and killed and shot that person. Moose in his confession should have made mention of Longa. Ndanzi should have made mention that there was a person that left the house. I don't know where he disappeared to. The confession of Mozi should have then picked it up that there was a person that got out of that house. I saw him, right? And it should have explained how this person escaped because they were waiting to make sure that they deal with that person. So the confession of Mozi doesn't doesn't fall on like uh, it, it doesn't tell us about Longwe. So you see that there's a problem with Longwe. There's a problem with the, this confession. You see that these confessions were forced, right? Uh, Carlos and Danzis obviously went into the house. Uh, now, it then, the, the second story, the second confession, it gives us the reason why Senzo Miyawa was shot. It says to us, this is some of the point, that and uh, Danzi believed that the uh, local Carlos was told what to look for when he got into that house. We say, oh, okay. So what happened? We were then told that and when Carlos got into that house, he opened something. And that is when Senzo Meiwa jumped in. So it is as if Senzo Meiwa was hiding something, right? And there was something important that Senzo Meiwa had on the day. And that important thing, it is the reason why Senzo Meiwa was killed. That's the, that's the picture that they are painting here. And that's where you need to show. You need, uh, that's, that's something that... I need to make sure that I make you understand that. You need to understand the picture that is being created. So they open that. And that is in contrary to what we were told by Zandi Kumal. 
Zande Kumalo speaking about this in this confession because I don't believe that this, these people made this confession. Zande Kumalo told us this intruders got into the house, said to them, for tax, cell phone, and money. And when they said all of these things, right, there was a reaction. Kelly Kumalo ran into the bath, look at the bedroom, and then Kelly Kumalo came back. And then uh, there's no, look, what, the, the story by Zande Kumalo is that they were looking for the cell phones and money, right? There's something that is not mentioned here that um, Kalros opened the plastic of some sort is not mentioned. That's why you see that these people were forced to make this confession. It does not collaborate. The evidence does not collaborate. It, that, the evidence doesn't make sense. Now, it says that when Kalros Gadlam Nube opened that, that thing, that sort of plastic, Senzo jumped and took her, he took her chair and threw it at um, a, a, at uh, Kalros. And then you get, the rest was history. So in this confession by Ndanzi, it tells us that Senzo Meyo was preventing uh, Kalros Gaza Mnube uh, from taking that thing, which the testimony of the people Ntumelo Togo Lokozandi doesn't have anything of this sort. That's why you see that these people were forced to make a confession. Unfortunately, there's always gonna be a problem to explain lies. It's always gonna catch up with you. So that's how it tells us that that's how Sanzomiwa was shot. We say it does not if you have listened to what Zandikuma Lomech, it doesn't match. If you have listened to what Tumelo said, it doesn't match. If you have listened to what Zandikumalo told us, it doesn't collaborate, right? Now, uh, so it tells us that, okay, Nobe uh, fired a shot and then uh, Mapisa went inside. In the testimony of the people that were in that house, there's no mention of a dead person that went in. All of them have never mentioned of, because according to the confession, listen to the confession carefully. When, when, when the shot is fired, Danzi panicked because he is an in, he's doing internship into this Inkabi thing. He's an intern. He panicked. He ran into the car. Remember the position Mapisa has picked is next to the window. So when the shot was fired, according to the second testimony, Mapisa came into the house. Danzi ran out. Mapisa came in. If you have listened to this, there was just two intruders. They fought with them, and the other one fled, and that's how it, they, they, it all disappeared. And they were left with one. And you know what I'm saying? Then they never make mention of the, 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 this one, that when the other one disappeared, and then they, come, and they came another one. That's how you see that the story doesn't make sense. Right? And then... It says, the testimony says, as Ndanzi was running back into the car, it then confirmed the position of Muzi. It says that Muzi was standing there, Muzi is his accused number one, was standing there observing what was going to happen, right? And now, if Muzi was standing as a person that is observing what was to happen, he must therefore, he, number one, he must have seen him Mtorozesi when he jumped into the Nasha family. It can't be that Mapisa who's standing next to the window doesn't track Mtorozesi as he jumped into this one. It, we, fine, we, haven't, we, we don't have a confession by Mapisa, so we say we will rely on Muzi. Moses, look, we are about to go into Moses' confession. Moses needs to, it's Moses' confession. It must have um, Mtorozesi, it must detail how Mtorozesi jumped into Nasha family. One. Two. Uh, look, the confession by Muzi, it needs to detail how uh, that, look, how Longwe left that house. It Because it was his responsibility to observe that. But the problem that we also have with this confession, right, is that if these things were as it is said, Muzi was standing there, then when these people were running, there was a witness that was called by the state by the name of Ntapseng. She should have seen this. Tapseng says they were waiting with Yolanda outside. They don't pick these people. 
that create a problem. That's why you see that these people were forced to confess and the problem with lies, it never collaborate. Ntapseng's evidence in chief says, she was standing almost in a pavement outside. It was Ntapseng and Yolanda. They had a bang. She described it as a bang. And then, listen carefully. She saw one person running. There was a second bang. She saw two people running. There was a third bang. She saw, after the third bang, the person that came out, it was, uh, the person that came out, it was, it was, um, it was this, this person, it was Andy Kumar. So you say, okay, uh, Ntapseng saw four people running. And then the confession of Tanzi has four people that are out there. Five is in the number five is in the car. You've got Mapisa, accused number four, standing next to the window. You've got Carlos and Danzi going into the house to rob the family. Then you've got Sibia standing out. As they run, they must be in the car. Okay, we say even if they are not in the car, then it means Ntapseng's testimony must have picked the car. Say, for instance, the car ran away with, or uh, the car, in, in the car there was, uh, there was, um, now cruise number five. Danzi then must be in this car. Then you, it, the, the, the maths make sense then to say the other three followed by feet. Then you say, okay, it makes sense. But then, the problem with that is that she did not even see the car itself then. The car that was stationary next to the house, the getaway car, she did not see that. And if you say, if you want to argue to me, with me and say, Bongan, the car was standing in a park somewhere in that park, then, then it's fine. And then I'll say it's fair. Then, here's the problem, gay. If you bring that theory, if accused number five was standing in the park with the car, the getaway car, then you have peep, four people on the scene. You've got Mapisa next to the window. You've got Muzi standing in the yard. You, then you've got these two that went into the house. So when they were running out, then she's supposed to see four people. And then there's this one that is also she did not pick up, which is long way. There's no explanation of this. So she's supposed to see five people running. Including long way. Do you see that? Do you see the lies? That it is difficult, guys, to explain lies. Lies is always gonna catch up with you. So that's why you see that. Oh, the problem with these people—they were trying by all means to force these people to say things, but the problem is that it catch it catch up with them. Here's another problem that we have. Let's go now. I wanna make you listen to the confession by accused number two before we transition to Akiloko two. The last look to Moses B. But already we we now have serious problems. Long way, where were you? We can't find long way in this whole thing. And we have a problem. If we can't track long way, we have a very serious problem. There is a serious problem. So let me sum it up and then let, allow you to listen to this version. In this version, uh, the staring according to accused number uh two is confession. The staring is Carlos Gazla Mnobe. And then four people were physically present on the crime scene, right? So take a look at what Danzi is said to have said. I used to work in Carltonville in 2014. I received a call from Sufisu Ntuli. He got my number from Muzi. They asked me to come to Basutu Hostel for Sloares. I came to the Basutu hostel and Sufisu called me to the bedroom. In the bedroom it was myself, Sufisu and Muzi. Whilst in the bedroom, Sufisu told me there was a job that evening. Sufisu and Muzi left the hostel. I remained behind and was drinking and chilling with my friends. Muzi called me 
to the Viva vehicle lighter that evening. He was with Sufisu in the vehicle. When this thing initially happened, we were in Muzi's room and we proceeded to Sufisu's and Ntogosisisu's room, room number 1B. While we were in Sufisu's room, Karos and Ntokoziseni Mapisa arrived. Karos and Ntokoziseni Mapisa then called Kelly Kumalu. They told her that they were all right. We all then left in the Vivo, in the Polo Vivo. It was myself, Karos, Ntoki Ziseni Mapisa, Sefisu and Muzi. At the stop sign, another Polo Vivo came and Karos, Ntoki Ziseni Mapisa, Sefisu and Muzi alighted the vehicle. I remained behind. They spoke amongst themselves and they spoke with Simpiwi who came in the other Polo Vivo vehicle. Simpiwi gave Ntoki Ziseni two firearms. We then left. We went to the township Fosleris. At Fosleris we stopped the vehicle. A call came in. I think it was Kelly and Karus kept on referring to this person as sisters. Karus got out of the vehicle to take the school, where after he called Mapisa, Sufisu and Muzi out of the vehicle. They had a meeting outside the vehicle. They came back to the vehicle. Ntoki Ziseni took out a firearm and gave it to Karos. Muzi had his own firearm. Sufisu had his own firearm. I was the only one without my own firearm. I had a small one in my pocket, but didn't use it. It was given to me in the vehicle. Karos said to us, we all had to be positioned since we all are going to hit Senzo Majewa. We then all got out of the vehicle. Sufisu was the driver. Muzi was the lookout. Mapisu went to stand by the window, also a lookout for someone who might come out of the window. Karos and I was supposed to get in the house. We uh, when we got to the house, he pulled out a firearm. He ordered everyone to lie down and he demanded phones and money. Carlos then gave me a phone. I had a plastic bag with me. There was a plastic container on the table with money. Carlos gave me the container which I put in the plastic bag. Everyone was lying down. I believe Karos was told where, whatever he was looking for was. Karos was about to open something when Senze Majewa stood up. There was then a scuffle between them and Karos, between, them, uh, between him and Karos, my apologies. During this intense scuffle, Senze took a chair and hit Karos with it. It appeared as if he wanted to prevent Karos from taking whatever he wanted to take from wherever he was opening. Kelly Kumalu was the one who directed Karos where the thing was, which he wanted to take. During the scuffle, Karos fired two shots. I did not see where Senzo was hit, because when the shots were fired, I went outside. I was still in the house when it was fired and I left the house as since I was falling. I ran out. As I ran out, Ntokoziseni Mapisa came in. 
I ran and got in the vehicle. They remained in the house. I was there plus minus five minutes before they came. As I ran to the car, Muzi was standing outside. All came back, Muzi in front, <coughs> and Toko Ziseni and Karos were behind him, following him. So now that we are done by, I mean, we are done with accused number two's confession, right? Uh, that script, that movie, uh, not with infected commas, it's actually a real one. Um, the movie written by these people. Where you see that, no, 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 no. The, the idea that they confessed, it's not true. Because now, this thing is crumbling. Go to the confession of accused number one, music, or that is where we are now. And there's something that we need to pinpoint, and we, you will see that, no, this, this is a lie. These people did not confess here. Because if they had made this confession, and the story being told by the people in the house, somehow it has to collaborate. The evidence has to make sense. But the, as, as things stands, the evidence so far doesn't make sense. Now, you see what, 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 what uh, accused number two told us, Bongandat. Pay attention to accused number one's confession. Listen to this one. Number one thing he says that um, he was told by Marco that there is a job. So now, remember, accused number one, uh, accused number two, Ndanzi, said there was Moses Bia, accused number one in the Mewa case, him, accused number two in the Mewa case, um, Nube, accused number three in the Mewa case, Mapisa, accused number four in the Mewa case, Nduli, accused number five in the, in the Mewa case. But when we get to accused number two now, he introduces us to another two characters, which is now, and he says, Marco. Notice that you don't have Marco in, in the confession of accused number two, number two. But accused number one tells us, Marco says to me, there is a job. Accused number two says he was called, I think it was either Nduli, accused number five, or accused number three, Carl Rose, that there was a job. Do you see this thing? So we said, no problem. We can take that. They were called by different people. We can take that. We can work with that. So let's work with that. So, but then the problem is that it's, as you track the character, Marco, you realize that it's going to conflict with what we are told by accused number, number two now. He says, Marco told him that there's a job. So he comes to the hostel. So then, then he says, he describes Marco now. How he describes Marco, you're going to see that it conflicts with what we were told by the people in the house. He says, Marco had dreadlocks and Mkimbi. Uh, look, uh, it was Marco with dreadlocks and Mkimbi. Now, let's go back a little bit. According to the testimony given by uh, the people in the house, they said the other intruder had dreadlocks. The other one had gold tooth. Now we know for a fact that the one with gold tooth, it's not Ndanzi because the dentist has confirmed that Ndanzi never had gold tooth in his mouth. And Tanzi never had dreadlocks. We all know that. No, so now, the dilemma that is now being created by accused number two, one's confession is that uh, accused, look, uh, the, the person with dreadlocks here is Marco. We say, oh. And then he introduces us to Mkimbi, right? We say, okay, we now have to follow two pe people here. Mkimbi and Marco. Now, okay, so um, uh, Marco was... Uh, wearing a, a, look, a hoodie. Now, please, the description now given by accused number one to say, Marco had dreadlocks. Marco was wearing a hoodie. Now, you say, Bongs, where do, you rem where, where do we get the story of a hoodie? Now, a hoodie, if you remember vividly, is a story or a fiction, if not even a fiction, not even a fiction it's a real fiction. It's a, this non-existing story that we were told by the people in the house that there was a person with uh, dreadlocks uh, wearing a hoodie. But now, accused number one says, no, the person that you guys were talking about is Marco. It is Marco that had dreadlocks. It is, the, so the description fits who? Marco, not Ndanzi, not Nobe, not Mapisa. It fits Marco. It is Marco, according to the story, that had dreadlocks. It is Marco, according to the story, that had the hood, was wearing the hood. 
So then you ask yourself, when the police went to Ndanzi to search for the hood, why did they go to Ndanzi when the conf there was a confession made by these people? It shows that this was a lie. There were a lot of cover-up in this. I don't know if you see. But then, remember, in Ndanzi's story, they went from the hostel to the, look, where, as they were going to take Meiwa's life. Please note the inverted commas here. As they were waiting, as they were going to take Ndanzi's life. And to those who are sitting at home who doesn't understand why I'm making this. When you make this, you are simply putting the fact that this statement is questionable. Right? So, as they were going to take Senzo's life, they moved from the hostel. And upon reaching a certain stop sign, that's where they met a, 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 with a character called Simpiwe, who gave them two guns. From that stop sign, they went straight to the Kumalo house. Please note this because then we are going to now interrogate the confession made by accused number one, Moses Beer. Moses Beer described the very same scenario and said, when they moved from the hostel, the first thing that they did before going into the house was they went into a traditional healer called Mkulu. Now, this confession contra contradict that of, uh, oh, 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 of, of, of Ndanza, right? So you see now that there's a problem with the confession because the confession now, it is contradictory. I don't know if you see that. It is contradicting now. But then, according to the, the confession uh, from accused number uh, one, they moved from the hostel. They went to Mkulu to check if they will succeed with the mission, and I will agree. That's what usually we hear, that uh, look, this incubus that will do. But then the problem is that if the confession was free and voluntarily, why, the con why so much contradiction in the confession itself? If these are the right people f who did this crime, why, uh, look, let's, let, me, let me say this, if these are the right people, one, Two, if these right people also confessed that they, they did this, why they gave us two contradicting confessions? And we're supposed to believe that these are the right people. It can't be. If the confessions were made free and voluntarily, the confession ought to have, ought to have collaborated itself. It ought to have, there, must, there, must, there was supposed to be a cohesion in the confessions but there's no cohesion in the confessions the confessions are contradicting one another now okay let's go let's continue let's continue so uh, look accused number one they went straight into a traditional hill whom they paid 50 rand a very questionable fee you can never pay uh, these people so so little never it doesn't make sense but nevertheless it's fine and uh, this is the person that was told like that, that told them that they were going to be successful now notice this in the second confession, in the, the confession by Sbia, it tells us that Marco told us that Kelly wants money from Senzo Meiwa. So it gives us the reason why they were about to do this. So in other words, this Inkabi, when they receive a call from Kelly to say, listen, I've got a job for you. I want you to take Senzo Meiwa's life. So according to this, they ask the question, why? Why do you want us to take him? Then Kelly Kumalo tells them that, no, man, I want money from him now right there there's a problem the problem is where was the money that he wanted kelly kumala wanted money from senzo Meiwa. then you say oh how was she gonna get that money like we need to be fair in our approach here and say where is this man you say bongan he was playing football so if he died then he was gonna get those monies but then the problem is they were not married. Senzo was married to Mandisa, traditionally so, which is recognized as in community property. And Kelly Kumala was just a side chick. How was she going to get this man? That's a problem. And we need to be fair in our approach as, as we look into this. Unless there was a presupposition that said Kelly Kumalo had signed an insurance on Senzo Meiwa. And she was the sole signatory there. Unless otherwise that is true, then it makes the theory that says she wanted money from this, then it makes sense. Otherwise, if that is not true, it doesn't make that doesn't make sense. Which money? Unless then we don't know that they were they had a business together. 
and there were some investments that were to come out, and she did not want Meiwa to enjoy the fruit of his labor. She wanted everything. Then it makes sense. Right? Okay, so now let us now explore this point, right? Now remember, Ndanzi said, Ndanzi's confession said, guess who went into the house? It is Ndanzi and Nube, right? Remember that confession. It is Ndanzi. And remember in Ndanzi's confession, he even, um, according to Ndanzi, right? Moses Bia was standing outside, observing everything outside the yard. Mapisa was standing on the window. Uh, number five, Nduli was driving the car, was in the car, the getaway car. And then, then you are left with Mapisa, Loko Mnube and Danzi. Accused number two and three. Then accused number two and three, according to the accused number two's confessions, they are the ones who went into the house. Now, if, if, if the confessions were true, were made free and voluntarily, there must be collaborative evidence. But listen to Moses Bia's confession. Guess who went to take Sfiso Meiwa's life? Who went into that house? What? <laughs> it was Marco and Makimbi who went inside the house and took the life of Senzo Meiwa. Did you hear that? Does that evidence make sense? Is this confession, was this confession made true or look me free and voluntarily? Those are the questions that now you are beginning to ask yourself. Because you see, you now see it for what it is. These confessions were forced. They were forced to make these confessions, number one. Number two, they did not make the actual confessions. They signed the statement. The script writers did not know what they were doing here. They just, the problem with lies is that it never, it lies are never consistent, right? Nobody can speak lie and be consistent in lie, never. Even if you are a pathetic and a professional lie, there will always be things that will, will always expose you because truth is the truth. You can never speak lie like the truth. So that's what you see. Now, the last point is that Musi emphasized that you know, he remained outside. The fact that Muzi emphasized the fact that he remained outside, it creates problem for us. The reason why we are doing all of this is because Longwe is going to testify. Believe it or not, uh, the court is going to recess, right? For about two weeks. Um, but I can tell you this. If the court doesn't go to recess, believe it or not, somewhere next week we might have Longwe. So take this into the back of your mind and look at the confession and Try and find out. In this confession, Longwe is not made. There's, there's, no, there's no mention of Longwe. And the problem is, Longwe cannot go there and change his statement. What he said at Metro FM, even though he did not say it under oath, even though, right, um, it, it was not, sorry, an, a look, an, a, sorry, it was not an affidavit or a, not, na, no, a statement that was made uh, that, that, that was binding. But if he goes to court and he starts lying, then we will know. That he, even if that is of no consequence, but we would know that he's a liar. So now, if, for instance, you believe that the confessions are true, were made free and voluntarily, if you believe that this, these people made this confession, we will submit you into a psychiatric ward. You can't tell me that these confessions here really they have some sense here. Guys, I don't know. If you believe this nonsense, this, 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 there's something wrong with you. If you believe that this, you know, one people will say, some people will say to us, yeah, they made it. It was free, involuntarily, blah, 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 blah. These are criminals. Fine. We never said they are not, but also we said, for the Mayua crime, they did not make such a statement. They did not, take the Meiwa's life. So, please, let them serve for the crime they've committed, not the Meiwa crime. Number two. All the other points to mention, not number two. But, you know, I think it is worth mentioning 
the following. You know, the people who wrote this whole series, this whole uh, movie, they deserve an Oscar award. And you stop this thing of being jealous. Stop this thing of being jealous. You are jealous. You should be understanding that these people deserve a recognition. And they deserve an Oscar award. And you should be you should be voting for that. Why? The category of this movie should be the best horrible movie ever. The best lies ever told in court. That's the title of the movie. The best lies or the and not the best, the worst lies ever told in court. That's the title of the movie. The writers are horrible in writing. The script directors are very horrible. The editors are very horrible. It's like even, even an amateur wouldn't have write, written this. It's the amateur of amateurs of amateurs who wrote this and brought it before court and said to people, Believe the truth. Believe. They, they, they have, they've been forcing us. They bought people here on TikTok to say things. I haven't seen people that they've bought on, on YouTube that will come on YouTube and say things because uh, they know will take them head to head. So they've bought people to, to, on Twitter to defend them. They've bought people on TikTok to defend them. And there are accounts that I can now name or on, 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 on Twitter that defends them. But we know that it's a movie. We know they wrote this move. We know it's a fact that they wrote the move. It's a lie, right? That's why they deserve an Oscar award for lying in the presence of South Africa, Africa, and the, the whole world. They lied in the... We are not saying the people, these people that we are talking about here, did not... I mean, they are free. They just didn't commit anything. They didn't do anything. But we are saying... We want people to serve for crimes that they've committed. And that's all we want. Not this thing of wrong people. No, we don't want that. No, no, no. So I, I'm i saying they deserve an Oscar award. But before I leave you, I want you to listen to Moses' confession. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to leave it here. At the end of this video but don't forget to like the video comment in the comment section below click the notification bell so that you will be notified when i post the next video till such a time good people please take care of course said my court said to me there is a job we need to do i asked them what job and my court said they were hired by kelly to kill sandro and I ask the suspect, which Kaylee and which Senzo? The suspect said, Kaylee Kumalo and Senzo Mehiwa. They are the people we are talking about. Paragraph 3. I asked them if they already charged the money, and they said yes. They charge 100,000, both Marco and Makimba charge. For the killing. Marco was the one who was having dreadlocks and Makimba was wearing the cap red in, red in color and as I was wearing the white cap. Those caps were wearing on Saturday and the one with dreadlocks was wearing the woody, the wool hat. The accused remind me that in order not to mix the days in brackets. Sometimes we drove, same time, we drove to the traditional healer, Nkulu, as we used to call him. And he is from Swaziland. This is the traditional healer we use to go to before we commit a crime. He is from Swaziland. Paragraph 5. The Binyana stays at Katle Home at Palm Ridge and we enter there, three of us. Marco is the one who explained to the traditional healer, Kulu, in brackets, that we want to check 
if we are going to succeed in doing his job. He further mentioned to Mkulu that we are going to kill Senzo Mehiwa and we were bought or hired by Kili Kumalo, who was the girlfriend to Senzo Mehiwa. Mako told us that Kili won money from Senzo, but he never told Mkulu that. Mkulu, traditional healer, checked for us and said, we are going to succeed to kill the third person.